Hi, I'm a possum and I find garbage. Today's garbage is Alien 3000. I briefly mentioned this movie in my review of Doom Annihilation because the crappy imp costumes reminded me of it. So I decided to rewatch this movie for the first time in 10 years and it was even worse than I remembered. I guess I repressed my memory of it. Just like I repressed my memory of that one weekend I spent at my uncle's house when I was a kid, just before he went to prison. Talk about traumatizing. I mean, the guy didn't even have cable. Tax dodging old b****. Anyway, let's start the review. The movie starts with some guy using binoculars to spy on his friends making out. Well, this movie wastes no time. Then there's some kind of earthquake, and our three campers notice a cave. And because all of them are white, they have to go check it out. They go into the cave and see some gold treasure laying around, and some swords. These look like, uh, like Viking, um... Conquistadors. They don't look anything like either. They pull one of the swords out, which causes wind to start blowing in the cave for some reason. And I guess it wakes up our monster for the evening, an invisible alien who proceeds to rip the two guys apart. The girl tries to run away, but the alien catches up and rips her head off. Then we cut to a woman waking up and screaming. I wake up screaming sometimes, but then I go right back to sleep when I remember the real nightmare is my daily life. So this is Kate Simmons, a mental patient and our protagonist. She gets harassed by one of the orderlies at the mental hospital, then we cut to a park ranger finding the severed head in the woods and making a phone call, which is a really stupid thing to do. I mean, you're just gonna have to give the head away if anyone knows you have it. Cut to a cheap set that's supposed to be a government office where they talk about this being another one in a string of mysterious killings around the same area. They decide to go talk to Kate because she's apparently a survivor of one of these invisible alien attacks. Then the camera pans over to reveal an alien lying on the table. Back at the hospital, these government people, Officer Woman and Officer Black Guy, interview Katie and ask her if she knows anything about the girl whose, whose head was found and the two boys who went missing. She says she doesn't, but asks if they checked the cave. The government people say they didn't find a cave and ask Kate to show them where it is. Kate refuses and tells them the gold is cursed that the alien will kill her if she leaves the hospital. Later that night, Kate tosses and turns in her sleep while two army guys go into the cave. The alien grabs one guy's gun and shoots the other guy, then the first guy runs away. Then Kate wakes up screaming again. So apparently, Kate has some kind of psychic connection to the alien or the cave or something and can see when it's killing people in her dreams. Big deal. I see people getting killed in my dreams all the time, and I always wake up covered in blood. What's up with that? You might also notice the alien seems to change shape. Sometimes it looks like some kind of weird bug thing, but other times it's human shaped. This is never explained. The next morning, the two army guys who were in the office earlier are waiting in a helicopter, the cockpit of which looks like the inside of a news van or something. We'll call them Durag and Beavis. The guy who ran away from the cave earlier shows up and gets ripped in half by the invisible alien, then Durag and Beavis fly away. Back at the hospital, Officer Woman and Officer Black Guy talk to Kate again and explain they're from a secret division called the Office of Paranormal Investigations, and they tell her about how two soldiers were killed, and Kate tells them she saw the killings in her dreams. Officer Woman asks Kate to help them find the, the cave again, and this time Kate agrees because she's convinced the alien is going to come for her anyway. Then the camera zooms in on another mental patient who inexplicably starts yelling at Kate. You brought this upon yourself! You're the monster. You're the evil one. You're evil! Of course she's evil. She's white. Cut to some soldiers driving up to the edge of the forest in a pickup truck because the filmmakers couldn't get an army jeep. And then we're introduced to some more disposable and unlikable characters. Sergeant Slickback, Trailer Trash, White Guy, and Girl Who Looks Like a Witch But Isn't or Gwilby for short. They join up with Kate and Officer Black Guy and Woman and they drive off. The truck breaks down in the middle of the desert and Kate talks to Officer Slickback about nothing. Then Trailer Trash and Gwilby talk about shotguns next to White Guy. So Sergeant Slickback fixes the truck, then they continue driving, so that scene was kind of pointless. But then, in the very next scene, they find the road blocked off by fallen rocks so they have to leave the truck behind anyway, which just kind of makes that scene even more pointless. They might as well have combined them into the same scene if they're gonna have to leave the truck behind anyway. So they walk through the woods for a while, then set up camp, where it becomes even more apparent that the filmmakers couldn't get any army stuff so they just bought some tents from Walmart. Gwilby talks to White Guy about killing Avon and taking the treasure when they find the cave, and they say this loud enough for Avon outside the tent to hear. 
Then Kate talks to Sergeant Slickback about nothing again. Then Kate has another nightmare, but this time it's a memory of when her friends were killed by the alien but she got away. Then some guy finds the cave, then our heroes walk through the woods some more. Trailer Trash shows off his paintball gun, which looks like some kind of giant bazooka for some reason. But then Officer's woman and black guy ask Kate if she knows where they're going, and she says the cave is calling to her. Then she has another flashback, then they continue walking. You know, I have flashbacks all the time. Flashbacks about my time in Vietnam. Let me tell you, there's nothing more traumatic than finding out the lady is actually a dude after you've already paid them. Then they arrive at the cave, then see the other guy from two scenes ago fall over dead. Kate says it's the alien's way of letting them know that he knows they're there. So then the ge these geniuses set up camp right outside the entrance to the cave where the murderous alien lives. Officer Woman tells everyone that they can't take anything out of the cave because the government wants everything untouched so they can study it, and they have infrared scanners to help them see the invisible alien. Then White Guy and Grulby volunteer to go into the cave first, since apparently nobody heard them loudly talking about how they wanted to take the treasure for themselves. So White Guy and Grulby go into the cave and find the treasure, but then their motion sensor thing starts beeping, but it turns out it's just a rubber bat on a string. Grulby shoots it and the sound alerts everyone, but then they come out of the cave saying they didn't find anything. Sergeant Slickback orders everyone to move the camp, then Officer Woman tells Officer Black Guy she suspects White Guy and Gulby are planning to steal the treasure. Officer Black Guy walks off to take a dump, then Gulby follows him and stabs him to death. Then White Guy intentionally sets off a tripwire and claims the alien ran past him. But then Gulby screams and claims she saw the alien kill him. And even though Kate saw White Guy set off the tripwire himself, for some reason she doesn't say anything. Later that night, Kate and Sergeant Slickback talk about nothing again. Then Kate asks him if he knows the alien didn't kill Officer Black Guy, to which he says he knows. You know it wasn't the monster that killed Lyle. I know. Okay, so the guy in charge is aware that one of his team just murdered a government officer, but he did nothing about it? So the next morning, Officer Woman tells Sergeant Slickback there's a helicopter coming tomorrow, and he says he wants them to give say Kate so because they don't need her anymore. Then gives the order to move the trip wires. Then Trailer Trash tries to start a, a fight with Sergeant Slickback, but Officer Woman breaks it up. Then the alien walks up to them and we see its patented monster vision, but nobody sees it because they don't have the infrared scanners turned on for some reason. Actually, they never use them again for the rest of the movie, like the writer just forgot about them. Then we cut back to the government building where Do-Rag and Beavis tell a scientist lady about the guy they saw get ripped in half. Then she shows them the alien on the table, which she says was killed by another team. Do-Rag and Beavis leave, but then it turns out the alien is still alive and it strangles scientist lady to death. Do-Rag and Beavis come running back, and we get a rip-off of that scene from Independence Day, where the alien uses a human to talk. The alien tells them he's one of two aliens who were stranded on Earth 300 years ago, surviving by eating gold, and that their people are going to come exterminate the human race. Then Do-Rag and Beavis throw a grenade at some nearby oxygen tanks, and run out of the room before the obvious miniature blows up. Back at the campsite, White Guy and Groove sneak out to steal the treasure, and Kate wakes up from another nightmare and leaves. Then Kate catches White Guy and Gurgurly in the cave, packing bags full of treasure, and tries to stop them at gunpoint and explains the gold belongs to the alien, and if they take it, will kill them. She also reveals she knows they killed Officer Black Guy. Then Sergeant Slickback shows up with a gun and says they're taking the treasure with them to the, back to the government. The next morning, Sergeant Slickback radios the helicopter being flown by Do-Rag and Beavis, who somehow managed to survive an entire building blowing up with them inside it, because there's no way they could have gotten out of there in time. And we see that he has White Guy and Gwil handcuffed together. Then they hear a growl, and something sets off a tripwire, but they don't see anything. Kate starts yelling about the alien, but nobody believes her, which just raises the question of why they brought the infrared scanners if they didn't actually expect to encounter an invisible alien, or why they trusted her to lead them to the cave for that matter if they all think she's crazy. Then Trailer Trash starts shooting at nothing to mock her, and then the alien gets him. White Guy and yell for someone to uncuff them, and they all grab the guns and all look in the same direction like a bunch of idiots. So then the alien comes up behind Kate and claws her. Then they all start shooting at it, but the alien grabs his shotgun and runs off, but don't worry. 
the alien never uses it, and the movie just kind of forgets that happened. Hey, if you're gonna have a military guy in your movie, can you at least make sure the actor knows how to hold a rifle properly? Then they come up with a plan to shoot the alien with Trailer Trash's paintball gun so they can see it. I guess it's a good thing he brought that thing for no reason. They set up the paintball gun and Grrrr says they should use the Kate as bait because they all assume it's coming after her for some reason, and Kate agrees. Kate sees the alien's footsteps in the dirt, so she throws some dirt at it, which reveals it, and they all start shooting at it and manage to hit it with paint, somehow managing to coat the whole thing in only two shots, which is convenient for the special effects department because now they don't have to do the predator effect anymore. They shoot at it some more and it runs away. Then the helicopter shows up and they wave at it, but then the alien jumps onto the windshield, and even though it lands on the right side of the window, Durag and Beavis look to their left. And even though the alien isn't doing anything but clinging to the windshield, this somehow causes the helicopter to crash. Durag and Beavis jump out, but the explosion kills Officer Woman. Sergeant Slickback finds Officer Woman's body, then Durag and Beavis find each other and decide to go looking for the others. Back at the camp, Grrr restrains Kate while White Guy smashes up their radio equipment so they can take the gold for themselves. Kate manages to, to get free and grabs a gun and starts yelling that they need to bring the gold back to the cave. But then Sergeant Slickback comes back and tells her there isn't any point anymore. Kate, put down the gun. There isn't any point anymore. Uh, yeah there is. For all you know, the alien just wants the gold. All you have to do is put the gold back in the cave and the alien will stop trying to kill you. Then you can just walk back to the pickup truck you came in. Why did you even need the helicopter? Real nice job on the radio, Burke. Alright people, we need to stick together or we're all gonna die. Hold the f*** on. You already know White Guy and conspired to steal the gold and kill all of you. They've already killed one of your own, which you know, and they just smashed up the radio, thus killing any chance of calling it backup or a rescue. It should be plainly obvious by now that these two idiots are a bigger threat to your survival than the alien. Anybody with half a brain would just shoot them now, but you're not gonna do anything? What the f*** is wrong with you? Then White Guy says they're taking the gold, and Sergeant Dumbass is just okay with that. It's going back in the cave. Do it now! Relax, Kate. If they want to carry the gold, let them. What? The alien is after the gold. The gold is the reason the alien is trying to kill you. It's stupid enough you're letting these idiots live so they can continue to be a threat, but you're actively permitting them to endanger you? Then Grrrl grabs the gun Kate's holding and dares her to shoot her. Now, any reasonable, sane, and moral person would have done so without a second thought. But Kate doesn't because she's also an idiot. So then they grab the gold and start making their way back to the truck. I don't know why they didn't just do that in the first place. As they walk, we hear a voiceover of Kate and Sergeant Dumbass talking. Scott, I know you believe me. Just tell them to leave it behind. Let's just leave the gold behind and go home. I do believe you, Kate. It's not worth dying over and they'd kill us for it. They don't care, so I can't care. So Durag and Beavis find Officer Woman's dead body and take her gun, because Sergeant Dumbass just left it there when he found her body, which is yet another stupid thing he's done already. Then they find the cave and decide to go in to look for weapons and water. Shouldn't we be doing something more productive like getting the hell out of here? No, let's just go in, come out. There could be weapons, could be water. I don't know why you would expect to find weapons in a cave, but whatever. Then the Moron Brigade continue walking when Kate gets grabbed by the alien. Sergeant Dumbass tries to save her, but then the alien grabs him and rips his head off, then casually walks away with it. Good. Meanwhile, Durag and Beavis walk out of the cave with some swords. Well, um, excuse me, Conan the Barbarian? Can we get the f*** out of here now? Yeah. Just keep following the sun. Follow the sun? You realize the sun moves, don't you? How is following the sun g You know what, f*** it. So Durag and Beavis find some tracks in the dirt and decide to follow them. Kate, White Guy, and Grrrl stop for a minute. And Kate says they should kill the monster because it won't stop chasing them now. It killed Scott. He, if anybody, didn't deserve to die. Yes, he did. Yes, he f***ing did. F*** him. No sympathy for the stupid. Kate, I tell you what. We make it out of here. I'll split the gold with you. I don't care about the gold. I just want to kill this thing. 
What happened? I thought you said you wanted to kill it. So Durag and Beavis continued to follow the sun and find Sergeant Dumbass's body. Then Durag remembers the other group had a truck and are probably headed back to it. So they realize they might be able to get a ride if they catch up to them. But as they run, they stop and see the alien past the trees and realize it's been following them, so they run. But they can't outrun it. So Beavis throws his sword, figuring the alien wants the gold. But Durag tells him to go pick it up. So he goes to get it, but then the alien shows up and picks up the sword. Now you see, it was just standing there holding the sword, not even looking at you. So if you didn't shoot at it, it might not have chopped your paper mache head in half. Idiot. Then the alien comically cuts Durag in half, thus ending that subplot. Hey, you know how in a real movie, a subplot would normally merge with the main plot at the climax, thus tying everything together in a neat bow? Basic storytelling logic says Durag and Beavis should meet up with Kate and the others at the end, and use their combined knowledge and skill to help defeat the alien. But no, they just get killed, and Kate and the others never even knew they were looking for them. So that subplot was entirely pointless filler. Anyway, Kate and Team Rocket find the truck and start driving away. But then the alien runs after them. Grrrr throws dynamite at it, because they have that for some reason, but it doesn't seem to do anything. And the alien continues to chase them as they drive away at 5 miles per hour. Of course the alien manages to catch up to them, knocking a bag of gold off the truck. So Grrrr gets off the truck to retrieve it, and Kate goes with her for no discernible reason, even though she doesn't care about the gold. I don't care about the gold. They put the bag in the back of the truck, but then White Guy speeds off, leaving them behind. Every man for himself, baby! <laughs> oh, so that's why Kate went with her. The plot demanded it. But then the alien jumps onto the back of the truck and strangles White Guy through the window. So instead of trying to fight the thing or get away, White Guy decides to drive the truck off a cliff. Then Kate grabs a sword out of one of the bags of gold, and then the alien suddenly shows up, having somehow managed to get back up from the bottom of the cliff in only a few seconds. Grrrr runs off with the gold, and Kate tries to fight the alien, but it overpowers her, but then Grrrr breaks character to come back to save her, but it claws her to death with no effort. But before she dies, Grrrr pulls out a grenade and blows herself and the alien up. Then we get some confusing editing when Kate looks at the explosion where we can clearly see the alien being flung through the air. And then she turns around to look at the sword, and the alien comes stumbling up to it from that direction, like it magically teleported to the complete opposite side or something. And even though the dynamite didn't hurt it before, I guess it's hurt now. So Kate grabs the sword and decapitates the alien. So after getting shot repeatedly and being blown up with dynamite, the sword is what finally kills it. Kate washes her face in a nearby river, and she sees the alien's reflection in the water, but it's just a hallucination, I guess. Then we get a jump scare as the park ranger walks up to Kate and just grabs her like no normal human would ever do in real life unless there was something wrong with them, and leads her back to the road. But then they see some flying saucers, and Kate starts laughing with insanity. Some more aliens come out, and they're not invisible for some reason. Like the movie forgot the only reason the alien was visible is because they got pain on it. But who cares, the movie's over. Holy hell, what a dumb movie. You know, I can understand characters occasionally doing irrational things for the sake of the story, but there's a big difference between a character making mistakes based on faulty or incomplete information, and a character doing things that are so obviously counter to their interests despite having all the information they need to make informed decisions. If the characters are doing stupid things just because the plot needs them to in order for the story to work, you have a bad plot and you need to throw it out and start over. Alright, roll the patrons, I'm done. Special thanks to my $10 patrons, Blandis, Charles J. Harris, Jaron Marles, John Wellington, Keith Paul, King DDD1273, Lex Reardon, Paco, Ricky Baruga, and Victor Alexandrovich Gonchar. <laughs>